Well, welcome to Passover with Scott Laird and Chef Rich Hall. Welcome, Chef. It's nice to see you again, Scott. Appreciate yeah. it. You know, if you were at Passover 2018 or 2019 in the hotel, guess who made your food? This guy. And so we are gonna teach you to do a few simple things at home for our Passover. Uh, we're gonna do some matzah, we're gonna do some lamb, we're gonna do some hummus. Uh, it's gonna be great. So first we're gonna do some matzah. I mean, it's the exact same recipe that we did at the hotel. It is, okay, so this is where we use the saj and we cooked yep. it on the saj. Now we know nobody has a saj at home unless you have a wok and you turn upside down and get a little adventurous. I, so, I recommend a cast iron pan. <laughs> when, when, when Listen I, to the chef. Yeah, when I seen the wok, I was like, people are going to have issues with that. And then um, it fires. comes out better in a cast iron pan anyway. Okay, so. well, let's do that. So now you've made some dough here, which we'll show in a second. And you're going to teach us how to make it from scratch. Yep, we're going to start off and uh, make the dough. Okay. And then uh, we'll go through the process that uh, we went through at Passover. All righty. So I've got the dough here. This is a really nice dough. Now, Chef, I'm noticing something here. Usually a dough, you know, if I put it on here and roll it around, we'd have to worry about it sticking, but this is not sticky, how come? I actually uh, put a little extra olive oil in there. Um, there were a lot of issues on the first one, and um, <laughs> everybody warned me, it's gonna stick, it's gonna stick, and um, I played around with it a little bit, and sure enough, it did stick to everything. Uh -huh. it, was almost, it was almost like chewing gum. So we put a little bit more oil in there, and that's, yeah. Creates a little bit more you know, non-stickiness. So now we put how much? Uh, uh, we're starting off with a cup of flour. Cup of flour. This recipe right. will scale, but it's not going to be exact okay. because the moisture in the air. There are a lot of different factors. The the type of flour that you use. So where or, you live and yeah. All that. Okay. Uh, um, for a cup, you want about a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And this is a preference thing too. So okay. I mean, it's I recommend making it in smaller batches okay. um, because you have more control over it. Plus, if you make a mistake, you don't like it. What have you wasted? Eighty cents. I mean, right. it's I got just you. you know. Okay. For um. So flour. So now matzah is a really simple thing, right? We're not involving eggs or anything here. Are no, we? Okay. no. It's uh, it's water, olive oil, salt, and flour. There you go. And love, okay. and that's just about it. So. All right. And the water. Um, we're and, doing how much about um, that? We're gonna we're gonna start out with an eighth of a cup okay um, just to moisten it and we're gonna adjust all of those things um, and the olive oil we're also gonna start out with about an eighth of a cup okay so equal amounts all right we're gonna and mix it up. we're gonna make some noise all right and after about a minute you should start to see it come together. Let's stop and see where we're at. So we're after, a go. Minute, after a minute, it starts to come together and you start to put in we're some more water. We're gonna add a water. little bit more water. Okay. Um, if you, you can't, I don't know if you can see there, but it starts to uh, crumb. Little pieces like yep. that. Looks like uh, shortbread on the side there. Yeah, and actually okay. what we're after is just one big piece. Okay. And it will come together. And it look like this. Just like that. Okay. That was actually in here not, not too long ago. You see it start to peel away? Sorry to cover it up, but it kind of jumps around if you don't. This is a new mixture, believe it or not, that's low. Um, all right, stop and look and see where we're at again. Okay. See, it's starting to form into a ball here. Okay, it looks very similar to this. And you said it starts to pull away, yeah, pull it's away like, from the side. Yeah, it'll start collecting uh, into a ball as it rolls around. Okay. Now, if someone doesn't have a little gadget like this, can you use a regular food processor? Um, that's pretty much what this is. Okay. Yeah. And the, I, if you have a KitchenAid, it's way better. Oh, Do okay. it with your dough hook, and you don't. It's just much, much easier. Okay. I uh, couldn't find my dough hook, and I ordered another <laughs> one from Amazon to bring here, and it was the wrong size. Ah. Um, We're almost there. You see it start to pull away. Let me 
one final drop of water and we'll be good to go. Okay. Sounds like it's struggling, doesn't it? <laughs> now that looks like dough. It's almost, we'll hit a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick. Yeah, you can tell it's a little. Sticky there. Like I said, most of the recipes that you'll find won't call for quite that much oil. But, but if you want something like that. Trust me, you're gonna um, be happier with it if you have a little bit in there. Smell that motor? <laughs> <laughs> this is why you want to use a kitchen aid. <laughs> You're going to burn this little thing out. We're going to tighten it up just a little bit. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to start working on this. Yeah. Take about a golf ball size and start rolling it around. That what you want to do? That's it. Okay. We have a relatively small pan, so we'll do them, uh, do them kind of small. Yeah, you want these about, it's better to make them in small little yeah, batches, is that what it, it is? seems uh, to work better if okay. it's smaller. Yeah, I'll grab a piece too. Okay. Yeah, teach me how to do this right. Mm. If you were at Passover, you got a chance to do this part. That's right before we put it on the saja. So you, you literally just pull it apart in your hands, yeah. right? Okay, like that. And you said the thinner the better, is that right? It seemed uh, to work better if it's thin and if it's even. Okay, so we can put it on, can I put it down on here and squash it down? Okay. Get a nice round shape there. I think we just burned out the motor in that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Well, we're going to do this uh, one uh, hit wonder this I, time. <laughs> I, I hope it looks smooth because it really did just burn the motor out. I'm glad you guys can't smell that. All right, so there we go. Here we go. This is a... Put that in there? Right there. Right. Now what kind of heat do you have this on? Um, I, low in a thick pan seems to work the best. Low with a thick pan, so, okay. Cast iron, you like that? Cast iron seems to hold the heat better than anything else. Okay, very good. What about those copper bottom things? What do you think about those? I never work with those too much. Um, I got one of the um, uh, copper griddles. Okay. And it worked great for a couple of weeks and then not so much after that. Okay. The finish or the, the coating started to wear off. So and good old cast spots. iron there. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, it, I don't think we've come up with anything better yet. Okay, and how long do you do it on, on each side? Do you only flip it once or a um, few times? I play around with it a you little do? bit. Okay. Um, I, I guess if you get really good at it, that won't be the case. But, <laughs> um, but if you're the type to burn out a motor on your first try, that might be exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with the amateurs over here. No, no, you're kidding. Does everybody have... understand the processes for, for that? It's pretty I think, simple. Yeah. I think very yeah. good. And already you can see it's nice and dried out. You were telling me before we turned on the cameras that if you do it at a lower heat for a longer time, it tends to bring out or evaporate the moisture. Yeah, it becomes more like the matzo that you purchase at the store. The okay. it's, it's, it, if that's what you're looking for, it's more like a pita or a naan if you cook it at a higher temperature. I think we got some of both at, uh, at, the, at the last time. Mm -hmm. Some people would make it thicker. And, yeah. and with the sauce, some spots are hotter and some spots are cooler. Mm. Plus we were outside and there's a lot of variables there. Exactly. A lot of people standing around and so it's... Uh, Good times. Well, this time, now you can have a Saj party in your kitchen. If you yeah. want to use the wok, would, could someone do that in their house? Would you advise that or just um, do this? I would say to stay away from that if possible. If you have a really good cast iron wok, mm -hmm. 
then they, I, go for it. I but, cast iron walk. Yeah. Well, most of the most of the good okay. walks, the commercial walks, it's, it's going to be iron anyway. Oh. It's just hammered. But um, if you have um, the kind of walks you see at, in retail stores, I would not recommend it. <laughs> okay. Right? We'll stick um, with especially the if it has a handle on it or anything like that. Um, and so uh, I think it's just unnecessary <laughs> risk. And you know, it's you now it's starting to brand brown there just a little bit, just a little couple of tan mm-hmm. spots on the higher parts. So you want to have it a nice, almost burnt on those top first yeah, you, ones. Right? I mean, you could pull it now for a uh, for a pita type bread, mm-hmm. but if you're going for a so I'd give it a good browning on both sides. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of air pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, just like to pop the hole. Oh, okay. You know, so to put some air. Yeah. I guess you could have a well, four, four like nearby. That. I mean, yeah. it's. Um, I've seen uh, flatbreads done, not not Jewish flatbreads, but I've seen other flatbreads done where they actually encourage that, yeah. like, like a big you mm-hmm. know bubble out of it. So, well, and then you see, like you said, the 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 uh, manufactured matzah, where it has the stripes and the piercings yeah. in it, so that they, the holes are in there. Obviously, they recognize that as well. They don't want that. Yeah, I mean, if it's unleavened bread, you kind of want it to be unleavened. So, <laughs> you know. Just an idea. <laughs> yeah. um, I was testing this recipe this morning, and um, I made it and had it for breakfast. I just uh, fried an egg and put it on top of it. Oh, very I good. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's not something that I would make on a regular basis, uh-huh. but um, I really did. Yeah, it was nice. It's a very simple matzo. Uh-huh. And again, so... Uh, you could probably make enough for at least one serving for a family of four with something we made here. Yeah, with the, um, with a cup to a cup and a half of flour, you're gonna get about twenty four to thirty pieces. Okay, this size of that size, but so, that's what what four four five inches across. Yeah, I mean, in a serving, you might eat two if you're sitting at a meal, mm-hmm. but you know, if, um, uh, if, we're, if you're serving it with hummus or something, you might make a little bit extra, you know. But um, it's a uh, it's a pretty good serving. To me, that's the perfect color there. Okay. It's, um, this golden here, but not the dark, dark brown. That's, For sure. Uh, that's just about right. Yeah, you don't want to have it burnt. That would uh, ruins your matzah. In addition to ruining your mini <laughs> food processor. <laughs> I can't say I'm out a lot. I think it was I think it was twenty bucks. <laughs> okay. So, so if you want to waste twenty dollars, do it this way. If um uh, <laughs> if my dough hook had been the right size that I ordered off of Amazon, we'd be doing all this with the KitchenAid. There you go. Okay. That's, uh, very simple. That's exactly what you want it to look like. There's your matzah. And okay. That's it. Very and, good. Uh, so we'll have this have one. a little crisp to it. Very and, good. Um, and that's all she wrote. All right. And so we'll put the, this recipe online for you. There you go. There is our matzah with Chef Rich Hall. And we'll see you again for the next recipe. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to Passover Recipes. And as promised, Scott Laird, Chef Rich Hall. And uh, we promised that we'd see you uh, when the smoke clears. And since we're done the matzah... <laughs> the smoke has cleared. <laughs> no, gonna, we didn't burn anything. We're, we're going to show you how to ruin a $20 mixer part two. Uh, <laughs> with some matzah. Is that what we're doing here? Okay, you can't have matzah without, uh, without, the, with the, without the hummus. So let's make the matzah. What have we got here, Chef? Uh, we're just going to do a, a traditional basic hummus today. Okay. We're not going to do anything fancy with it. Um, there's a lot of things you can add to it on your own. Um, roasted peppers, and, you know, the... the Options are mind blowing. There's so much you can do with it. But if you start with a good base, you're good to go from there. Okay. So we're going to start with chickpeas. Okay. Uh, tahini, garlic, paprika, olive oil, salt, and lemon. And you're telling us that if you are going to buy some processed garlic, this is the one to go with because it's in a tube and there's no oxygen. Yeah, right? it's an outstanding product. There's no oxidation at all. Um, if you buy the little jars, you'll notice it's great the first time. After the air gets to it, it starts to taste kind of funny, mm-hmm. and anything you put it in, it'll take over. So okay, good. It's a great enough. product. It really is. All, all right, right, let's do this right quick. So how many chickpeas are we putting in your whole um, can? We're good. This is actually um, uh, two... Uh, 16-ounce cans, okay. and we're only going to do about half because our mixture is uh, kind of small. Okay. Um, so, obviously, if you had a regular size food processor, you could just do the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now, do you want to get any—I noticed you're having some of the uh, chickpea 
water or the juice go in there? Is that intentional? Yeah. Uh, typically, what I'll do is I'll pour half of it out, okay. and I'll use half of it. Okay. And that seems to be, regardless of the brand, that seems to work out pretty well. Okay. So. Very good. So we're putting in about uh, I don't know, one can yeah, worth. We got a can, looking, maybe, right? maybe a little bit over. Okay. I'm, I'm scared to go much higher than that with the, uh, with the blade. <laughs> yeah. With um, our first experience with this mixer. Uh, we'll start to smell that odd electrical burning smell here shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so we have a little over the can there. Um, if you're doing this at home, just do the one can. All right. Um, for the tahini, for one can, you're going to do two tablespoons. If you buy tahini... You'll notice that the solids will sink to the bottom and get really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Flip it over every once in a while in your cabinet, okay. in your refrigerator. It's um, it, you want it to move like this. Okay. Uh, so you can you can achieve that just by turning it over for yeah. a, a, it, a it week will or whatever. Settle it like is. cement. I mean, yeah. on the I've had bottom. that happen. I wasn't sure that that's a good option. That's so just basically, yeah, it's basically peanut butter um, uh, made with sesame seeds. That's but a good way to put it. But it's not emulsified the way peanut butter is. Mm. It's gonna it's gonna separate. separate. So. Well, like some of the the all natural peanut butters yeah, are, you, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or almond butter or anything like that. And we're shooting for four tablespoons. Okay. I'm not gonna measure. Um, okay, about four tablespoons to one can of chickpeas. Okay. That should get this exactly where we need to be. All right. Now, garlic. Uh, oh, no, what comes next? I'm sorry, yes, you tell me. garlic. Okay. And um, recipe for a can would call for two cloves. Okay. So a clove is about that. Okay, so literally about the size about of a that. clove. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, um, quickest, uh, most convenient way to keep track of it. All right. Do juice of uh, uh, half of a lemon. These are really big, juicy lemons, so maybe a little less than half. Okay. Take that for you. Right. Get that out of our way. And olive oil, same amount of olive oil as tahini. Okay. And then salt to taste. And then we cross our fingers that the uh, food <laughs> processor is going to do its job. Do we add the paprika later? Or oh, that's going to go on top. On top. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, otherwise it'll turn it. Turn it a red kind of color. Yeah, I guess, and right? it's um, you want the contrast of the flavor. Um, uh, basically, we'll put the hummus down, we'll put the paprika, and we'll pour the rest of that olive oil over the top. The very top of it is my favorite part. So. Okay. That's encouraging. That looks that pretty worked good. Out, that worked out better than I thought it was going to. I'll take care of that for you. Thank you, sir. All right. It smells really yummy, too. It does. Now it's a little thinner. If we want to make it a little thicker, what's the secret um, Well, there? traditionally, it should be about that texture. Oh, But okay. just more chickpeas will make it, uh, more make it thicker. But right. um, traditionally, when you serve it with the, um, uh, with the flatbread... You want it to um, to be like a spread. Okay. The oil right on top of the paprika. Oh, yeah. And that's it. It's like you've worked in a restaurant or something before. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of times you get in a restaurant and it's thick. No, I actually scoop it with an ice cream scoop. You know, I'm, I'm oh. sure you've seen that. And it's, um, it's not only is it not traditional, because I'm not a big stickler for the rules about that. It's just not as pleasant to eat. Yeah, no. It's, it's, um, this is more like a dip. It should be. Yeah, yeah, it should be. All right, and it's uh, that simple. It's it. Yeah, that's all uh, That's all there is. Like I said, this is just a basic one. You can add lots of different stuff to it. Um, uh, roasted peppers is my go-to for a different one. But um, I've seen all different kind of stuff in there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend uh, proteins, though. 
Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't do meat or anything like that. Um, I have seen it with um, uh, vinegar in it as well, and it's. I really enjoyed it, but it's a very different thing. Now, I'm you, not even sure if you can call it hummus at that point. It's just a dip. Yeah. You know? Now, if you do the peppers, obviously you don't want them all chopped up in here. How do you, or do you? What's the process um, there? I, I would roast the pepper, take the skin off of it, start the food processor with the pepper. Okay. So that you make that first and then add the other ingredients that you see here. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so Chef Rich Hall, thanks very much for this. What are we going to do next? Um, we're going to do some lamb next. Oh. And uh, we're going to do a rack of lamb instead of uh, the big leg that people normally do for Passover. All right. I think cool. it's, um, uh, it's a lot easier. It's a lot faster. That's what we want. Easier and faster uh, Passover. And I think it's better, too. So. All right, very well. So stay tuned for that. And thank you again for watching. And we'll see you for the next recipe. Welcome to Passover Recipes with Scott Laird, Chef Rich Hall. The good stuff. The good stuff. We've got our hummus. We've got our matzah. Now it's time for the lamb. What are we doing with the lamb here? Um, we're, we're doing a rack of lamb today, which is probably not traditional for um, you know for Passover. But like I said, it's a lot easier, and oh, it's okay. my favorite cut. Um, so first thing we're going to do, I've already Frenched these, but um, so Frenching. Frenching. So first of all, we buy a rack, right? So you buy it in uh, like a whole mm -hmm. bunch of the ribs together. Then you slice them down the middle. That's what gives us this, yep. or that. Yeah. And now we're gonna Cuts create right this, down. which is called Frenching, you mm -hmm. said? Okay, go ahead. And basically what we're doing is just removing the unedible part. Okay. So all the fat off of the bone. Okay. Why do they do this, do you know? Um, if you don't, it looks kind of gross the way it draws <laughs> okay. up around the bones. All right. Um, so it's, it's an aesthetic a, thing. It's not really a flavor thing at all. Um, plus, you, you don't really want that much fat on it anyway. So Okay. Now, you know, some people shy away from lamb because it's kind of a trick to, uh, to cook. Some people feel, at least I feel like it's kind of a trick to cook. It depends on the cut. Uh, it doesn't? Okay, so the, the rack is easiest? Rack, you basically treat it just like you would a steak. Okay. If you eat your steak rare, well, you, can do rare you, want, you want to eat your uh, lamb pretty much the same way. Yeah. Okay. Now, if people like that, is there is there a trick to retaining some of the gamey flavor or getting rid of it? Um, the rack itself it doesn't have a lot of that gamey flavor. Okay. Mostly you're going to find that when you're uh, working with the legs okay. or the shoulders, the roasts. Um, for the lamb, it's pretty mild. You won't, okay. uh, you won't have uh, much of an issue with that. All right, very good. So now we are have a Frenched leg of lamb. Almost. This oh, one not leg of lamb, a rack of lamb. Sorry. One little piece I want to let go. <laughs> All right. Use our fingers. Okay, good enough. All right, and we have rosemary and thyme, yeah, and that's, garlic and salt. That's, that's all I like to put on. Really? There. Okay. I mean, uh, first time I learned to cook lamb, spread it with Dijon mustard and breadcrumbs, and cooked it in butter, and I enjoyed that. Okay. But it, it wasn't the lamb he tasted so much as like the butter and the uh, <laughs> exactly, and right. the mustard. I was like, well, I bought this expensive piece of meat, and you know, I basically covered up the flavor. So. So we put about uh, Let's go with it. garlic. What a cl half a clove worth each. If you guys weren't looking right now, I'd be rubbing this all <laughs> in my hand. So all right, so our pan's getting, getting a little hot there. We're getting right where we need to be with our pan. Okay. Very good. Now, um, I'm not going to chop all these up and rub them on there. I'm going to cook them with it because I want a mild flavor. I don't want it to take okay. over. Okay. So just a pinch of salt on each or however much you think is... And do you season both sides or just one? Uh, we're going to do both. Okay. <laughs> and some olive oil on top. Very good. Mm, this is looking good. It smells so much better than that uh, burnt mixture. <laughs> and use the plate to... Yeah. Like I said, if you around. guys weren't looking, I'd be doing a lot of this right now. So. <laughs> okay. Very good. So do both sides, right? Very good method there. And a little salt on the other side, and we're good to go. Okay. And what at what point does the rosemary and thyme go on? Uh, we're going to put it in the pan with it. Okay. And like I said, we just want the perfume of it. We don't want to take over. Um, I need to rinse right quick. All right. Be right there. Always wash your hands. <laughs> All right. All right. 
So. Now, when this hits a pan, we want to hear a sear because we want to make a little crust on the outside. Okay. So, ah. that sound, if you don't hear that sound, your pan's it, it, you're not going to get the, uh, the caramelization on the outside. And when we're not over seasoning or we're doing things simple, the little steps like that count a lot more. Or literally just taking fresh herbs and tearing them up That's and putting in. Okay. Yeah. And what do we have here that we're plating on? Um, a little cucumber salad to serve with the lamb. And this is just um, uh, herbs, cucumber, lemon, garlic, olive oil. Okay. The usual suspects here. You see that same pattern in a lot of things that we did today. Um, and how, uh, how long do you marinate that for? Um, you need to give it at least an hour. Okay. But you can make it a day ahead and it's just fine. Wiggle them around a little bit like that to uh, one to make sure that it's not sticking, and uh, two to make sure we get that browning all the way around there. And let's peek. Oh, very nice. That's about half the color that you want. Okay. Are we flipping them just once or a few times? Uh, we're gonna do two. Okay. Um, I like to serve lamb between uh, medium rare. And medium is about 150 degrees. Um, most of you like um, lamb cooked very well done. And um, so it's it's kind of up to you as far as your personal preference, how long you want to let it go. Um, I think the one trick is to make sure that you get that caramelization on the outside and then just cook it to tempt the way you would. It's basically what I would do with a steak. So. And this would be 100 times better if it was on a grill outside. <laughs> um, so you can do it on a barbecue grill? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah um, you, it's gonna be the same uh, techniques that you would use with steak. If you have something you particularly like with steak, a certain sauce, a certain technique, lamb will work pretty well in its place. And that's if you go with the um, uh, either the rack or the tenderloin. The other cuts, uh, a lot of cuts of lamb, you just wanna roast, cook them low and slow. You know, if you get a lamb and you're doing a big feast for Passover, sear it off, cook it really, really slow and wet. And, okay. Um, you basically have like a pull apart uh, pot roast kind okay. of texture. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's what you'd be looking for. Now the other cuts of lamb. We're talking about a maybe a shoulder or uh, a leg is probably the most leg? common. Okay. Uh, and then shoulder roast probably the second. Uh, sometimes it, you'll see it called a butt or a Boston butt. It's a shoulder. Okay. So they're they're not really going to give you a lamb butt. So <laughs> this is starting to smell really good. Mm. And again, the herbs are just left in there to. Yeah, we infuse. just want the, we just want the oil from them. Um, I uh, I don't want to chew on a piece of rosemary, <laughs> and I don't want to have to move it off my plate because it looked cool when it got there. I mean. It's, uh, you just kind of want the uh, the evidence of it left behind. Now, if you did this on a barbecue grill, where would you put those herbs? Uh, see how we're stacked on top here? Okay. We basically do the same thing, and then when we flip them over, the open flame would kiss them like that. Ah. So because all you're after is the oil. and you, you don't really want the leaves, and you certainly don't want the stems. And um, if you work with fresh herbs a lot, you know how much fun it is to pull the leaves off thyme. <laughs> and, and, and then what do you get? You get little pieces of thyme between your teeth and it's, it's not pleasant. Man. That's not the point. All you're after is the flavor from the oil. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Well, those look just about done. What do you say? I think we are about there on these thin ones. We'll give that thick guy another minute. Now, Chef, you're not gonna say this, but I will. You've won awards for your plating and things of this nature. So what's, what's a nice way to do this? Um, well, as you said that, I'm making a mess here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, start from the center of the plate, use products that you like, but also go for some color, you know? Um, 
I, uh, a lot of times you'll get uh, lamb and everything on your plate is brown. Mm. And it's delicious, And but it could be a lot more if you just did it on some sliced tomatoes or cucumbers or um, whatever your starches that you're using. I think a little bit of color makes a lot of difference when it comes to the presentation. So your, your meal is more than the taste. It's how it looks. It's how I it think smells, so, right? yeah. Mm, very good. Uh, if you're lucky, anyway. All, All right. right. Wow. This is our lamb. Mm. And uh, feel free to cook it longer at home. Um, right now, we are about medium here, and we're about medium rare on the big one. Okay, very good. So we have our matzah, our hummus, our lamb with our marinated salad. That's a wrap and, for and, and our dead food processor. And our dead food processor. <laughs> Which everyone needs one, at it's least. It's not a party unless something dies. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you for joining us. This is your Passover meal. Chef Rich Hall, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, we'll see you next time for another Passover recipe. Mm -hmm.